for this problem statement we have the steel shaft has a diameter of 40 millimeters and is fixed at its ends A and B. If it is subjected to the couple moment, determine the maximum shear stress in regions AC and CB of the shaft. The modulus of elasticity is given is equal to 75 gigapascals. So we have here point A point B and point C here. So we have all the necessary dimensions. Diameter of the shaft is 40 millimeters. We have at what point this couple moment is being applied 400 millimeters from here from point A to point C and from C to B is 600 millimeters. Now we know what this torque is right due to a couple moment. So it gives us 0.3 kilonewton meters of torque being applied here. Now if you recall to solve for the couple moment we have two equal and opposite forces acting on each of the ends and to solve for the torque is equal to that that force being applied times the distance between these two equal and opposite forces. Or you could actually do one at a time, right? Three kilonewtons times 0 0.05 meters plus the other one because the torque is being along the same direction. So you just add them up and you get the same answer. 0 0.3 kilonewton meter is the torque being applied to this shaft here. So we could see that this couple moment is along this direction. That's how the torque is being applied to this shaft counterclockwise. Now to make things a little bit more easier, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and draw that free body diagram of this shaft with the torques and the reaction torques as well at A and B. So we have that torque T that we just solved for and we have the torque reaction and B. We know it's going to be um, opposite of it. So the sum of torques cancel out being equal to zero. So we have TB. And for A, it's also going to be opposite of this. So it's going to be going clockwise at A, T, A. Now, in this case, we're going to go ahead and do the sum of angle of twist being equal to zero to be able to solve for the unknowns in this system. So let's go ahead and do that. So what's very helpful when it comes to doing the sum of the angle of twist is what torque do you apply to the equation? Now, this could be a little bit confusing. However, um, the second you could actually split up what portion of this shaft that you're going to be analyzing. So we're going to analyze the shaft from point A to C and as well as from B to C. So in this case, I went ahead and cut up the, the, each portion of the shaft to solve for the internal forces that we used to do in statics. In this case, it's going to be the, the torque along this segment of A and C. So if you were to draw a free body diagram from point A to this point where I just cut up, we'll see that the internal torque in this is actually going to be TA for, for static equilibrium. In this case, it's going to be equal and opposite of TA. So it's going to be counterclockwise TA. And similarly for the other section, for when you solve for the angle of twist here, you're looking from point B to this point where I just cut up. And we're going to see torque B is going clockwise. Therefore, the internal torque here at this point where I just cut up is equal and opposite. So it's going to be counterclockwise. So, and it's equal. So we see the internal torque here is equal and opposite of TB. All right, so these are the torques that we're going to be using. So from shaft A to C, we have TA that we're going to be using. So TA times the length AC divided by the shear modulus and the polar moment of inertia. And then remember, it's the sum of the angle of twists. The other section is TB, TB times the length BC divided by shear modulus times the polar moment of inertia. And this is equal to zero. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the sign convention of this. Remember in the previous video, we denoted as the sign convention being this. Counterclockwise rotation is positive. Clockwise is negative. So in this case, TA is counterclockwise positive and TB is going to be clockwise. So TB, this one is going to be a negative. One of them is positive. The other one is negative. Um, in this case, it'll be helpful if you look at the shaft, viewing it from this point here. 
and you see that this TB is, is clockwise, which is negative. So here we have one relationship. Now, what about the other? Remember, which was previously stated here, the other relationship to be used is the sum of torques being equal to zero. And we'll use counterclockwise as positive as well. So T, so we have T, which is positive because it's going counterclockwise, minus T A is going clockwise, minus T B is going clockwise is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and use this relationship here to solve for T A. So T A is equal to T minus T B. So we have this first relationship and we could go ahead and plug in this T A into the sum of the angle of twist. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have t the torque T minus T B times L A C take away T B L B C. One thing to note, however, the shear modulus and the polar moment of inertia, they actually cancel out here because if you move this section to the other side, they're equivalent, so they just cancel out each other. So you could go ahead and distribute this. So once you distribute accordingly, we have T times the length from A to C, take away TB times LAC plus LBC, which this is equivalent to the entire length of the shaft, and we could just call it the length L. And we finally get, once you do some algebra, change it to one side, divide by the length, you f you are able to solve for the torque at the torque reaction at B, which is equal to the ratios of the lengths. So the length AC divided by the entire length times the torque that we solved for, and the same thing since we already once we have this value, we're able to solve for TA. So once you do this, you just plug in and solve for the appropriate reactions. So TB is equal to 0.12 kilometers. And you just plug in TB into here to get UTA. And TA is 0.18 kilonewton meters. Now, once we have the torques, we just use the shear stress due to the torsion equation to solve for the shear stresses at both of these segments. Since we did the free body diagram and cut them up from the, between the portion point A and C, we have TA that we're going to be using to solve for the shear stress within this segment, and TB within the segment CB. So let's go ahead and do that. So here are the equations for the maximum shear stress due to, due to the torsion at section AC. We have TA times the radius divided by polar moment of inertia, and for BC, we're using TB in this case. So we go ahead and solve. So once you plug in and calculate, here is the maximum shear stress that's going to be developed within the shaft from section AC, 14.32 megapascals, and in section BC is 9.55 megapascals. So as you can see here, depending on where along the section the torque is being applied in the shaft, it will in fact experience different shear stresses with, along that shaft you see in one segment it's be experiencing a lot more than the other segment. So this is something also to consider when it comes to designing of shafts. Where exactly is the torque going to be applied along that shaft to design accordingly such that there won't be any failure. So just to recap here, whenever you have a shaft um, with a external torque being applied, and it's fixed on both ends. This is where you're gonna utilize the relationship of the sum of torques being equal to zero for static equilibrium. And then you're also gonna, going to do the sum of the angle of twist to be able to solve for the reaction, um, the torques at each of the reaction points where it's fixed. So those are the two relationships you're gonna be using for the statically indeterminate torque loaded members is what it's called.